In modern cleaning, you can clean more in less time if you know the correct methods and you practice them until you become good at them. Our casual keepers use backpack vacuums. They were designed to save you time and effort. Before we learn how to vacuum, let's learn a little bit more about the backpack vacuum. The backpack vacuum weighs about 12 pounds and it won't hurt your back at all if you put it on correctly. The power head attachment is a lot lighter to push back and forth in an upright vacuum and you also won't have to wrestle a canister vacuum around the room. The backpack vacuum also comes with a floor piece for hard surface floors and delicate rugs, a two-piece upholstery brush, a soft dusting brush for delicate things like lampshades, and an edging tool to edge between carpets and baseboards. The vacuum also comes with two vacuum poles and a gas pump hose, which contains the suction control O-ring. Now that you know the parts of the vacuum, now we can learn how to wear the vacuum. First, make sure the backpack vacuum is plugged into the extension cord. Second, make sure the hose is firmly seated in the top of the vacuum. Third, loosen the shoulder and the waist straps. Fourth, slide the straps over your shoulders. Fifth, snap your hip belt closed and then pull your hip straps outward from the center of your body. Sixth, adjust the shoulder straps by pulling directly downwards. The weight of the vacuum should be on your hips. Seventh, connect the chest strap buckle and slide the strap up or down for best fit. There should be no space between the vacuum pad and your back. To turn on the vacuum, reach down to your left hip and feel for the power switch. It faces forward on the hip pad. To adjust the strength of the suction of the vacuum, slide the O-ring on the gas pump handle open or closed. Knowing this will come in handy when vacuuming couches and fringes on carpets. Now attach the power head to the vacuum pole. You can place the hard surface floor brushes, the upholstery brushes, and the whisk brim in your apron. The upholstery brush has a brush that slides off so you can clean pet hair off of fabric. Just make sure you place the brush back into your apron after you take it off so you don't lose it. The vacuumer's job is usually the longest of all the jobs in the house. It is the dry text job to make it a little easier by anticipating ways to help the vacuumer as he or she dusts. The first cleaning tech to finish his or her job becomes the vacuumer. The whole house should be cleaned except for the floors by the time the first cleaning tech puts on the backpack vacuum. The goal is to plug the vacuum into a central location and vacuum the entire floor. To accomplish this, we have a 30-foot extension cord. The ideal outlet is as close to your starting point as possible, while still allowing you to vacuum the entire area without replugging. This also means that most of the cord will be behind you while you vacuum, which is faster than working towards the cord. Just take the time to keep the cord behind you and untangled. Take the vacuum and extension cord to your starting point. Then unwrap the extension cord in a neat circular pile to avoid knots. Then plug in the cord. If you must unplug something else, make a note to plug it back in when you're done. Clients notice things like this. Start vacuuming in the room where the dry tech started their cleaning. And make sure to vacuum systematically so you don't miss an area or vacuum over it more than once. On carpet, use slow, deliberate, and overlapping strokes in a forward to backward zigzag motion with the power head, keeping the cord to your left as you vacuum to your right. Make sure you also vacuum with one hand, keeping the other hand free to move furniture and other objects that may get in your way. When you hit a wall or another piece of furniture, back up and vacuum in the other direction with the zigzag motion, moving furniture with your free hand as needed. Repeat this until you've vacuumed yourself out of the room. In high traffic areas, slow down and repeat some vacuum sweeps. In areas that are little used, speed up and don't go over it twice. But be very careful when you're moving with the backpack vacuum, especially if you're backing up and turning. The dry tech will leave you signals to save time. An overlapping cushion on a chair or couch means to vacuum the top of the cushions only. Leave the power head on the floor and use the upholstery brush to vacuum the cushions. Be careful of tassels and loose strings. A turned up cushion tells you to vacuum the entire couch or chair, usually due to pet hair or crumbs. When vacuuming furniture, follow the rules. Start at the top left side and work your way down to the bottom right. Pick up and vacuum under cushions and vacuum the sides and back of the couch too if possible. 
When moving furniture, the rule is to move the item as short a distance as possible. Tip the chair back, for example, instead of moving it. When you reach an area where the power head or floor piece doesn't fit, such as behind a large plant or desk, the area should have already been cleaned by the dry tech with a whisk broom or a cleaning cloth. When cleaning stairs, it's best to whisk or wipe several stairs and then vacuum several stairs and repeat the process until all the stairs are clean. Start at the top of the stairs and vacuum your way down. Use the floor piece and one vacuum pole to make it easier. Vacuum with back and forth motions of the floor piece on carpeted steps. Don't vacuum side to side. Make sure to be very careful when you do vacuum down the stairs. For throw rugs, stand on one end to keep it in place and vacuum away from where you are standing. Lift the power head at the end of the stroke and then repeat the same thing on the other side. When you get to hard surface floors, place the power head outside of the room and use the hard surface floor brush to vacuum using the same zigzag motion to use with the carpet. When vacuuming a wood floor, you want to make sure to vacuum with the grain of the wood. Lift up the corners and edges of area rugs to vacuum underneath. On bare floor or delicate antique fringed oriental carpets, use the hard surface floor attachment. Never use the power head on these rugs. For vacuuming fringes themselves, approach them from the middle of the carpet outwards only with the hard surface floor attachment, and never with the power head. When vacuuming delicate upholstery, antiques, or fringes, set the suction on the vacuum on low. You should never vacuum up water or spills as this will damage the vacuum. Empty or change vacuum bags outdoors if possible, or in a well-ventilated area. Now the last thing you have to do after vacuuming is re-wrapping the extension cord. First you want to unplug the extension cord, making sure to unplug it from the plug, not the cord. And if you unplugged anything in order to vacuum, make sure to plug it back in. Then you want to wrap the extension cord starting from the end closest to the vacuum. Then you start wrapping the cord around your arm letting the cord untwist from the plug end. Once the cord is wrapped, secure it with the attached Velcro strap. Then either hang the cord over the top of the vacuum or place it in between the straps. And that is all you need to know in order to vacuum correctly.